Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining us tonight. For those who don't know me, I'm Mark Swingle. I'm a certified financial planner and the principal advisor of Westfield Financial Planning. Listening in and ready to answer your questions are the advisors Dan Song and Tim Wynn. Dan is a chartered financial analyst and Tim is a certified financial planner like myself. So we certainly live in interesting times to say the least. It may feel as if we're living in uncharted waters, political polarization, social upheaval, a global pandemic, trade wars, a revolution in technology. But are the issues we face all that unprecedented? Bob Dylan signed his first recording contract in 1961, 60 years ago, wow. His anthem, The Times They Are a Changin', was released three years later, and it seems just as fitting today as it was in 1964. While lava lamps, bell-bottom, patched jeans, and Volkswagen bugs aren't quite far out anymore, social upheaval and the desire to challenge the status quo or the man are once again driving our conversation. Tonight, we are looking back into the past with a little musical flavor and some fun to provide you some historical perspective. It should remind you that we've overcome extraordinary challenges in the past, that we'll overcome the trials of the present, and that we can prepare now for the uncertainty of the future. So on this uh, slide, that essentially looks like me sitting in my room in the uh, early 70s. The only thing missing probably is a joint at that point. But uh, what I'd like to do today is to look back at some monumental moments in our nation's history by taking a quick look at historical events for every decade beginning in the 1960s. We'll review the challenges we faced as a nation and how history unfolded. Then we'll review some key takeaways for our, from our look back at history. And finally, we'll discuss how those lessons should inform our investing strategies going forward. So let's begin by looking to the past, which is the most fun part of this. It's 1960s. When the peaceful protests of the 1960s turned violent, John Lennon wrote the song, you say you want a revolution. I wish I could sing it for you. His lyrics supported change, but rejected violence as a tactic. His frustration with both the existing political structures and those who sought to violently overthrow them continues to resonate, resonate today. The 1960 presidential election gave us the young president JFK and the promise of great things to come. That decade, we were enthralled by the first Super Bowls, the moon landing, and Woodstock. On the flip side, we were shaken to our core by the assassinations of President John F. Kennedy, his brother Robert and Martin Luther King Jr., as well as the racial strife and riots our major cities experienced each summer of 1965 to 1969. The Cuban Missile Crisis and heightened Cold War tensions caused a bear market in 1962. Nevertheless, the stock market moved higher over the course of the decade, powered by the nifty 50 stocks that seemed to go in only one direction, up. Our current FANG stocks, F-A-N-G, of F, Facebook, A, Apple, N, Netflix, Netflix and G Google are an echo of the nifty 50 from the 60s. The 1960s was a decade of tremendous change, both politically and culturally, which is why some people liken the 2020s to the 1960s. Despite all this turmoil, a $10,000 investment in stocks at the beginning of the decade excuse me, would have more than doubled, as you can see on the slide. After the chaos of the 60s, 
we come to the 70s. And Marvin Gaye's song, What's Going On, as you just heard in the intro, summarized American sentiment when he pleaded for de-escalation. The 70s brought us two energy crises, soaring gas prices, rationing, and the Nixon Watergate scandal and eventual resignation. Racism and poverty, particularly in urban areas, remained widespread. In some ways, relief did eventually come. The Vietnam War ended great in the era of leisure suits, leisure suits, can't even say it, and disco arrived. Not so great. Jaws made us afraid of water for generations of shark week watchers, while Star Wars excited our imaginations for all times, it seems. Um, excuse me, guys. The feminist movement, I'm going to have to get rid of that. There we go. The feminist movement pushing for equal pay and treatment gained traction, which itself was a continuation of the women's suffrage movement, which took 100 years to get the right to vote and continues today with today's Me Too movement demanding safety and security for women in the workplace. For investors, the 1970s was grinding since stagflation was the name of the game. Energy prices quintupled, which resulted in a deep recession. There was high unemployment along with skyrocketing inflation. However, stocks, bonds, and cash cast off the malaise that many Americans were feeling and turned in positive returns. Note on the slide above that along with positive returns for all asset classes, domestic stocks notched the lowest returns with $10,000 growing to $17,685. Whereas a 50% stock, 50% bond portfolio delivered the highest returns, only slightly higher, at 18,508. By the 1980s, I was solidly into my adult years and Madonna's lyrics made it clear to me and my fellow baby boomers that we are living in a material world. Madonna was born Louise Chicone in Bay City, Michigan, close to where my wife Mary Kay grew up. The biggest difference being that Mary Kay is a natural blonde. In our material world, the economy was booming and we, not me, had more disposable income to spend. We witnessed the end of the Cold War, War and the fall of the Berlin Wall and the Iron Curtain. These events would signal the beginning of a new era of global economic cooperation and global trade. Conspicuous mass consumerism was all the rage cable, VCRs, video games, they all kept us entertained. And records and cassette tapes went the way of the buggy whip. The first modern big gas guzzling SUV was introduced as the Jeep Cherokee in 1984. The 80s made Bill Gates and Microsoft as they rode the wave of popularizing perhaps the most enduring and game-changing innovation of modern times the personal computer. Economically, the decade had some challenges. Two recessions, soaring inflation, and the Black Monday crash of 1987, which lost trillions of dollars in the span of hours. Yet the market not only recovered, but also delivered one of the strongest decades on record. Note the growth of stocks from 10,000 to $50,384, wow. The 1990s showed us too much of a good thing can breed its own form of discontent. In some ways, economic comfort resulted in a sense of boredom, a feeling that everyday life was devoid of meaning, a sentiment encapsulated by the grunge band Nirvana and really the whole grunge band movement. Though the 90s were generally calm, they were not entirely without strife. As Cold War tensions thawed, reignited racial tension in the U.S. led to the Rodney King-inspired L.A. riots. 
the Gulf War set the stage for decades and decades of future conflict in the Middle East. Broadly, many Americans enjoyed a time of prosperity. It was a boom time for stocks, known broadly as the 90s boom. A mild recession gave way to a recovery fueled by widespread adoption of the internet and technology. Investors rode the dot-com rise all the way to the record books. The 90s were the second best decade for stocks in history. Note the $10,000 growing to 53,278 at the end. Holy moly. Then comes the 2000s, a whole nother decade. The 2000s brought pivotal changes to American life in terms of technology, financial security, and our safety. But as New Jersey's own native son, the boss, put it so aptly in his tribute to 9-11 first responders, we rose up together through shared sorrow in a way Americans hadn't experienced in decades. Do you recall Y2K? I do. It was the fear that our computers would crash as the programmers didn't anticipate the new millennium in their coding. How's that possible? The rest of us saw the changing date on the calendar. Anyway, it turned out to be a non-event. We sailed past Y2K. We embraced technological advances. The first social media sites, MySpace, launched. iTunes changed the music industry. The first iPhone was released. Automation even came to the polling booth after the 2000 presidential hanging Chad debacle. That was a dress rehearsal for this year's litigious and sadly violent transition of power. Despite technology's promise and clear economic advantages, many investors were burned when the dot-com bubble burst. That combined with 9-11 brought the first of two major bear markets. The second being the global financial crisis, which brought a severe and long lasting global recession. From 2000 to 2009, bond and even cash investors pulled ahead as stocks experienced their worst decade ever. You can see that $10,000 in domestic stocks ended up in the negative with the total value of $9,090 at the end. For those working with us over that time period where we also invested internationally, i.e. we were diversified, the results were quite a bit better than that. The 2010s brought new life to investors and internet ubiquity proved to be both a blessing and a curse. While offering fun and fame, its anonymity also helped sow discord. We exited the two tens deeply divided. As Lynn manuel Miranda, as Alexander Hamilton asks in the hip hop musical Hamilton, are we a nation of states? What's the state of our nation? I only wish I could have his uh, rhythm. On the flip side, it was a decade of distractions. One only has to drive down the street and witness the pedestrians crossing the street with their nose buried in their smartphone. It's amazing more of them don't get run over. It is now an era of smartphone and internet dependence. Just try to take a phone from your child or your spouse and you will be convinced. This has both fueled and satisfied our hunger for viral videos, memes and streaming services that let us binge watch entire seasons of our favorite shows in a weekend. It's a lot of fun doing that. In economic terms, the 2010 were a mixed bag. Investors did well, but unemployment remained high, economic growth tepid, and for many, the outlook bleak. Few would have predicted the longest bull market and economic expansion on record would last the entire decade. Though progress was slow and steady, an economic and social divide was exasperated by uneven economic growth. For the investors, a 10,000 investment in stocks grew to 35,666. So that brings us to, the, to today, our current decade just begun, the 2020s. It has gotten off to quite a tumultuous start to say the least. 
a presidential impeachment, two really counting this year, protests against police brutality and racial injustice with the Black Lives Movement, record high unemployment, especially those at the lowest economic rungs, a bear market, a recession, and a presidential election with enough drama to put Game of Thrones to shame. We have also been really lonely as we've socially distanced from six feet apart to curb the spread of COVID-19. This has been quite a challenge. It's human nature to think that today's problems are unique and unbeatable. It is the nature of our brain to think that way from eons of evolution. But as you can see, every decade has had its own serious challenges. Whether it was the strife of the 60s, the terrorist attacks on 9-11 or the Great Recession, our nation has overcome insurmountable odds many, many times before, and we will once again. And perhaps most importantly, 2020 has provided, at least because I'm a financial planner talking about this, 2020 has provided two important reminders about the market. It's resilient and it's separate from the economy. Despite an economy that ground to a sudden halt, the market set records in both the speed and depth of its decline and the recovery that followed. This was a year for the record books and a year that dramatically reminded us to always plan and to stick with your plan because your natural human inclination is to change things at the exact wrong time. The numbers in the slide above are a bit out of date, but last year, the various stock markets were off 30 to 40% top to bottom as of March 23rd. Yet at the end of the year, the S&P 500 returned 18.3% for an unbelievably steep and quick recovery. As always, past results do not guarantee future results. So now let's review a couple of uh, key lessons from our look back at this history. Many investors are understandably anxious about the recent election and the new administration. Some clients have been tempted to make portfolio changes based on what they think may happen, or if they're especially concerned that their favorite candidate or political party lost. It is important to understand that history shows that investors have done well under presidents of both parties. A hypothetical $10,000 investment in the S&P 500 index in 1961 would have grown to more than $3.1 million as of June 30th, 2020. I wish my dad gave me uh, $10,000 uh, in 1961. Anyway, a very interesting fact from 1933 to 2019, average real total returns adjusted for inflation for Democratic presidents averaged 10.2 versus 6.9% for Republican presidents. But nearly all of that Democratic outperformance can be explained by the boom years under Bill Clinton, i.e. the dot-com boom, and the subsequent dot-com bust and global financial crisis under George W. Bush. Excluding those two presidencies, the difference in returns is practically zero. And as you can see above, we got blue guys, blue party doing well, and we have red parties doing well. So, the challenges we faced each decade have been steep, but our nation, our economy, and our financial markets are resilient. Investors that gave in to their emotions by reacting hastily did serious damage to their long-term financial health. There is a study put out by Dalbar each year analyzing investors' behavior in the markets, and it shows most investors dramatically underperform their investments over time by trying to get in and out of the market based on what they see happening in the world. You can see this on the slide, up, on the slide that the reactionary investor, that's the, the red investor, ended up with 466,000 versus $1.9 million for the 50-50 balanced stock and bond index. That is a dramatic underperformance of, your, uh, of the investment you're in. 
So stocks and bonds will perform differently from each other. Statistically, putting together results in a more stable portfolio when it is a well-diversified blending. This chart illustrates how different asset classes have performed over time. We help you build a portfolio that's right for you based on your comfort level with risk and investment time horizon using all these asset classes and a few more. So now let's just review a couple of strategies going forward that we employ. Strategy numero uno. And for those who've been with me for a while, you, you've heard me say this again and again, stay invested. From 1990 to 2019, 74% of the market's best days occurred during a bear market or within the first two months of a bull market, when it is impossible to tell whether we are in a new bull market or still in the clutches of a bear. Note that only 26% of these really good days when you really get your positive stock returns occur during the regular bull market times. To drive this point home further, if you miss the market's 10 best days over the past 30 years, your returns would have been cut in half. Miss 10 days and 30 years of returns are cut in half. And missing the best 30 days would reduce your returns by an astonishing 80%. Stay invested. Strategy number two, invest systematically. Most of you have been doing it in your 401ks for years. Like savings with every paycheck into your 401k, systematic investing is a strategy in which you invest a consistent amount on a recurring basis, monthly, quarterly, et cetera, regardless of what's happening in the market. It becomes automatic so you don't miss the money and you don't think about it. Most importantly, it just happens. We did not get a single client call us up in late March or April, May, asking to send us money because it was the buy of a lifetime. Rather, everyone who called wanted to get out of their investments. Thinking about it is a recipe for underperformance. This chart contrasts the results of three different investors who invested 10,000 per year in stocks versus a cash investor. The lucky investor invested at the market low each year, which of course is impossible to do. And the unlucky investor invested at the market high each year, which is equally impossible to do. And the systematic investor on the first trading day of each year without thinking about it. And you'll note that all of them made good money uh, versus the cash investor. Strategy number three, diversified, diversified, diversified. Diversified portfolio can position your portfolio for both up and down markets. It's not gonna stop your portfolio from going down, it's just gonna reduce the amount it goes down. Stocks offer greater growth potential. Bonds can provide income and help reduce risk. When your portfolio is truly diversified, there'll be times when one part of it is doing great and another part is underperforming and vice versa. Owning a diversified portfolio makes sticking with your plan and staying invested, the most important strategy, much easier to do since it will not decline as much in a down market, so you are less likely to panic out. This chart shows how different market environments where the natural tendency is to sell something that is doing poorly, only to see that same something rocket in value in the next cycle after having sold it. Back to Bob Dylan. Although it feels if, as if the times are changing and you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone, it's clear that many of the challenges we face today are echoes from our nation's past. As they say, history doesn't repeat, but it does rhyme. That's why it's so important to use history to gain perspective and see what the issues we face today aren't unique, hopeless, or overwhelming. As that perspective shows us, the American people, economy, and markets are resilient. It also shows that an investment success has far less to do with market behavior than it does with our own behavior. To that end, we encourage you to partner with us so we can provide objectivity and help you build a portfolio that matches your goals and comfort levels and helps you tune out the noise. After all, as Bob Dylan reminds us, the present now will later be past. Is your portfolio ready to keep up with the changing times? Thanks for your time today. I hope you enjoyed this look back as much as I did. And we hope you enjoyed uh, 
all the slides. I want to thank Richard Ben and the Hartford Funds for their help in putting this together.